Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I have something a little bit different. I know it's not totally like bookish related, but I wanted to talk about my top seven Studio Ghibli films of all time <laughs> because it, they're now available on Netflix Canada, so I am super excited to be re-watching them all. I've already started re-watching some of them. I love Ghibli so much. <laughs> For me, it was pretty much like my whole childhood was basically like Ghibli and Disney. Like those were the two um, cartoons that I watched um, as a kid. Um, just to keep it a little bit bookish, I wanted to recommend these books. Um, if you're into the artwork of Ghibli at all, or if you're into, if you have like a coffee table and you want some really nice coffee table books, I highly, highly recommend these um, art of books from Ghibli. They don't have them for all of them. I have three here. I have Totoro, Howl's Moving Castle, and I also have Spirited Away. Um, they're not the cheapest books. They're anywhere between like 35 to 50 dollars depending on the book so they're not cheap but they are stunning like I'll show you this one they show they have like early stage sketches the watercolor sketches which is what I love most about them but they also have like they show you the set sketches side by side with the actual animation it's really it's just really interesting they do um, character studies um, so this is like Chihiro's from Spirited Away so it's just like it's really pretty if you are a Ghibli fan, I highly, highly recommend these. Or if you have someone in your life who is a Ghibli fan and you're looking for like a nice gift for them, these are really nice. Um, yeah, I ha I've had these three for years, I think like over a decade. Um, but I am potentially looking into getting the Princess Mononoke one as well. And if they have a Castle in the Sky one, I probably want that one as well. But without further ado, let's get right into my top seven Ghibli films of all time. If you're wondering why it's like random number seven, it's because I was supposed to do a top five and I couldn't pick five. So here we are with seven. <laughs> so in seventh place, and these are in order, by the way, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out the order. So these are technically in order. Um, I'll give like a brief synopsis of each, however, I'm really bad at synopses and also some of these I haven't watched in a few years, so I don't fully remember um, the storyline. However, I just, I love Studio Ghibli films. I feel like a lot of them cover, even though they're like kids movies technically, they, they touch on some pretty important themes and pretty like hard hitting themes and, and um, they have some deeper meaning to them that I feel like when you rewatch them as an adult, they have a little bit more meaning to them. So I highly recommend them in the Japanese, original Japanese um, language with English subs. Um, of course, totally understand that's not everyone's cup of tea, but that's what I recommend. Number seven is Howl's Moving Castle. <laughs> I love Howl's. First of all, I think Howl's Moving Castle visually is probably my favorite film. I think it's absolutely stunning it's so beautiful the only other thing is I don't I don't love the soundtrack for um, Howl's Moving Castle and for me the Ghibli films one of the best things about them is that Joe Hisaishi composes most of the music for most of the films and he's an incredible composer um, and so a lot of the films have incredible sound soundtracks um, but Howl's doesn't have my favorite soundtrack per se um, but it is a really, really solid film. Um, it is about a girl, Sophie, who meets this wizard, Howl. Um, I can't remember how, but somehow she turns into, like, an old lady, and then she has to try to reverse the curse, um, and turn back into the young girl that she is. In the middle of all of this, um, Howl finds himself in the middle of, like, a war of some sorts. I can't remember. There's really strong, like, anti-war themes. There's also, like, commentary on age. Um, and I just think it's really interesting. Um, I loved this movie. I would say it's on the, in, it's in the number seven spot because the plot is not my favorite. It's just kind of like fine to me, but the art is stunning. Um, and Hal is such an interesting character. Also, Calcifer is my favorite, my favorite. It's like, he's like the cutest little, he's literally like a blob of fire. He's just the cutest. Number six. This one I feel like is 
less known. A, because I think it's older, and B, because I don't actually think it ever got a cinema release in um, the U.S. I don't even know if it has an English dub version, but it is The Grave of the Fireflies. Okay, <laughs> first of all, this is, if you're not ready to cry, don't watch this movie. Like, if you want a good cry, this is my go-to movie if I am feeling a good cry. It is about two um, siblings um, during the war, and that's basically what it is. The story follows these two children, um, a boy and his sister, and they are just trying to survive the war. Um, it is based on a true story, I believe. Um, but basically, yeah, they, they end up um, hiding in like a cave and living out of a cave to um, survive the bombs. It's a very, like, it's a very tragic story. I'm just gonna put that out there. There are no happy endings here. It is the saddest fucking story you'll ever watch, but it is so good. And it is honestly, oh, it's one of my favorites. It just, please watch it. It's, it's very good. Um, yeah, but it is very traumatizing. There's like, there's like a brand of candy that they use in the in the movie that's like comes in a tin and every time I see that brand of candy in the grocery store I like tear up a little bit on the inside because <laughs> I'm still traumatized by it. Um, coming in at number five is Laputa Castle in the Sky. I actually think in the American release they just took out Laputa, it's just Castle in the Sky. Castle in the Sky. This is a steampunk classic. So if you're into steampunk, I'd say for sure you need to check out this movie if you haven't already. Um, it is incredible. It's like, it's basically about um, these two kids, um, both, are, both of them who are orphans. Um, Sheeta, the girl, one day she like literally falls out of the sky. Pazu, the guy, he finds her um, and they become friends and basically they end up going on this journey to find Laputa which is the castle in the sky and it's essentially like Atlantis but in the sky and it's so good. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna say anymore because like that, that's just the basic premise they're looking for the city in the sky. Um, there's obviously like bad guys who are like trying to get there first and, and chasing them and, and so on and so forth. It's just a really fun movie um, and again if you're into steampunk at all, you have to check this movie out. It is a classic. Number four is Spirited Away. Um, I think most people have heard of this one. This is probably one of the most popular Ghibli films, I feel. This is kind of like a portal fantasy in a way. It's kind of like Alice in Wonderland-esque. Basically, it's about a girl, Chihiro, and her family. Um, they're driving through like a forest of some sort. They find a tunnel, they go through the tunnel, and they end up in this like old abandoned bathhouse um, and basically yeah it's like cursed um, and Chihiro's parents turn into pigs um, and she needs to figure out how to get them out. That's kind of like the basic premise. Um, themes in this one are really interesting. I always like I always like this one for the themes like it talks about like greed. I think it's really interesting. Um, also Haku is one of my favorites. Um, Haku's one of my favorite characters in all of Ghibli. I just think he is like a precious little muffin. <sighs> I love him. Love them. And then the artwork, the artwork in Spirited Away is stunning. Stunning. Um, and I think actually Spirited Away is probably one of my favorite soundtracks as well, um, which is why it is here on the number four spot. Number three is My Neighbor Totoro. <laughs> Yay! This was my childhood favorite. Um, I watched this all the time growing up. This was like my shit. When I say I was a Totoro girl, like I had all of like the Totoro like paraphernalia, like I had little stuffies, I had like pencils, all my stuff was Totoro. Like I was so into Totoro. Um, still am. I just, lo I just love it. So Totoro is probably, I would say, of all the movies like leans on the younger side um, of my favorites anyway. And it's essentially just a story about these two girls who end up living with their dad. Um, their mom is sick in the hospital um, and it's just about them one summer. They discover these like spirits and it's just like a fun time. It's it's such a fun movie. Um, I love it so much. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this was my this was my favorite movie growing up. So Oh, I just love it. And Totoro is just like the cutest, the cutest little like 
funny hybrid thing. It's funny because, like, the Chinese phrase for Totoro has the word cat in it, but it's not a cat. Like, it's, it's obviously, like, a bunny-esque spirit. I don't know. I just think Totoro is the cutest thing ever. Um, I really want a Totoro tattoo. That's kind of like, that's kind of how obsessed with Totoro I am. Um, but yeah, it's not at the number one spot because it is, it is like a nostalgic pick for me. I think as an adult, I don't enjoy it as much as I did when I was a kid, but I do think as a kid's movie, it is the best kid's movie. Um, and the soundtrack is excellent as well. Number two is Princess Mononoke, and I actually just rewatched this for the first time as an adult last night, and it went from being an honorable mention to being number two. Um, <laughs> I first watched this when I was really young. My, my dad took me to go see it at like an art house cinema, <laughs> basically. Um, I, don't, I don't actually know if Princess Mononoke had a cinema release in the US and Canada, but my dad took me to see it at an art house cinema where they played the original Japanese with English subs. Um, I don't remember much of it um, from that time. I remember I wasn't allowed to re-watch it as a kid though because there it is a little bit more violent, I think, than the others. There's definitely like people getting their like heads chopped off, like that kind of violence, but it is, it's such, it's such a great movie and it's, it talks about environmentalism and like man versus nature and I really like that. Um, and it's essentially about this prince, um, I've forgotten his name already, but the, he, he fights off a demon, he ends up getting cursed, um, and he has to find a cure for the curse in the forest, um, and, and hope that the forest spirit will save him. On the other hand, there's this like town of people who are led by this woman who, um, basically want to destroy the forest for, um, personal gain. Such an interesting commentary on, like, industrialism and, like, um, and, like, technology and, and the whole man versus nature thing is really interesting. Um, I loved this movie so much. I loved it so much. Um, highly, highly, highly recommend. I, again, I will say, like, it is a little bit more gory, so I would say maybe not the best pick for, like, an actual child, <laughs> but I think it's a really great movie, um, for anyone who's, like, maybe, like, a teenager and older. And coming up to number one, this is my favorite Ghibli film of all time. It is probably one of my favorite films, full stop, of all time. And it is the most, single most underrated Ghibli film of all time, I think, personally. My opinion only. And it is Whisper of the Heart. If you've not heard of it, I am not surprised because nobody talks about this, but legit, from the ages of 10 and 16, I watch this movie at least twice a year. And when I say at least, I mean typically once every two months. So definitely more than twice a year. But I love this movie a lot. It is a romance, so it's very different from the other ones on this list. I feel like the other ones on this list are very, um, are more like fantasy ones, but this one is straight up just a romance, slice of life. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> so, um, and I feel like everyone on booktube would love this. This is because we follow our two main characters, um, Seiji and, shit, what's the girl's name? Tsukishima. I don't remember her first name, but in this movie we follow two characters who basically, <laughs> it's so cute, they basically meet because she is a huge bookworm. She like is always at the library, always boring books. And she realizes that, or she notices that there is someone who has been borrowing the same books as her right like before her every single time. So she notices this guy's name and she wants to know who he is. And they end up like finding each other through library books. How freaking cute is that? I think it's so cute. And there's like a whole side storyline as well of like, her finding this like antique shop, which he is obviously like related to, but she finds this antique shop and then there's like a cat statue and she is an aspiring author. Um, he's an aspiring violin maker. It is just, 
Guys, it's just the cutest love story and I need you all to watch it so we can gush about it together. Um, I love it so much. It is my number one. I think everyone needs to watch it and I, I do think it is underrated because it's not your typical kind of... When people think of Ghibli, I feel like people think of like the fantasy, the really magical like creatures, that kind of thing. But honestly, Whisper of the Heart is the most wholesome romance. Um, if you are a fan of movies like Your Name, like A Silent Voice, I feel like you would like Whisper of the Heart. Um, yeah. <sighs> Do I need to go watch Whisper of the Heart again, even though I just watched it last week? Maybe. <laughs> anyway, so that was my top seven Ghibli films of all time. That is it for today. If you like this video, um, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Let me know which Ghibli films are your favorite, if you've watched any, if you've watched any of the ones that I enjoy. Um, and yeah, I look forward to chatting with you guys about Ghibli in the comments. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.